you ever thought to yourself, what is an organ? How does it make sound? Of course not. That's why I've created this video that will teach you the ins and outs of how an organ is constructed and how all the parts come together to make sound. Now let's go inside and take a look. Hey Matt, what you doing? Hi right, Cliff, what's going on? I'm trying to play this organ, but I can't get it to work. It's not making any sound. Oh Matt, you have much to learn. Take a seat and let me explain it to you. First, in order to know how an organ works, you have to know what an organ is made of. Here are the main components of an organ. The pipes. The console. The action. The wind system. Now let's go into greater detail about the different components of the organ. First, let's look at the pipes. The pipes are arranged into divisions, and each division is controlled by a separate keyboard, which can also be called a manual. There are usually two main types of divisions, the swell and the grate. The swell division is enclosed by shutters, which can be opened or closed through the use of a pedal. This allows the music to crescendo from soft to loud, or vice versa. The grate is the main division of an organ and contains the most stops. Wait, what are stops? Don't interrupt, Matt. Stops are you... Stops are used to control airflow through the pipes. When one stop is pulled, air is allowed to flow through a certain group of pipes. If no stops are pulled, then no air will flow, which is why Matt had such a hard time playing the organ. There are two basic types of organ pipes, flue pipes and reed pipes. Flue pipes can be constructed of either wood or metal and may be either an open pipe or a closed pipe. To produce sound, air flows across the mouth of the pipe and strikes the upper lip, also called the flue. This causes the air in the pipe to vibrate, producing a tone. Flue pipes are also grouped into three subdivisions, diapsins, flutes, and strings. Diapsins are the characteristic sound of pipe organs. Flute pipes have the least amount of overtones and contain the most fundamental content. String pipes are the smallest of the three and having more overtones produce a bright sound. As you may have guessed, the flute and the string pipes attempt to imitate the instrument that they are named after. <laughs> reed pipes, as their name implies, contains a reed which vibrates as air passes by it into the resonator. Reed pipes tend to be smaller than flute pipes because the fundamental pitch is determined by the reed length where in flue pipes, the pitch is determined by the length of the pipe. They also produce a louder and much brighter sound due to a large number of harmonics. Pipe structure will also significantly affect the harmonic content of an organ. Large pipes tend to have a dominant fundamental and less harmonics, while small pipes have more harmonics and less of the fundamental. Also, pipes that are cylindrical, like these, will reinforce the odd harmonics. Pipes, pipes that are conical, or shaped like cones, will reinforce both odd and even harmonics. The next step in organ construction is the wind chest action. This mechanism allows air to flow through the pipes when a key is pressed. But how is that possible? If you shut your dirty little mouth, I'll tell you. It is possible through the use of several different techniques. The tracker action uses a mechanical system in which there is a physical connection between the key and the opening of the wind chest. This connecting piece is called the tracker. As you can see, this particular organ uses tracker action. The second technique uses direct electric action in which pressing the key 
energizes an electromagnet which causes the pipe to open and allow airflow. The third technique uses pneumatic action where pressing a key opens the air column allowing the air pressure to open the pipe. There is also a fourth technique which combines electric and pneumatic action. In the old days of organs, it was not custom to have the console separated from the organ. But with these modern techniques, it is possible to have a detached console without the use of an intricate lever system. Can I play it now? I'm not done! Now let's talk about tuning. Tuning an organ can be quite a challenge, even for a skilled professional. In equal temperament tuning, the octave must be divided into 12 equal parts, called semitones. All the fifths must be flattened, and all the fourths must be sharped. This causes the thirds and sixths to be sharped as well. The organ builder must also keep the octaves perfect while taking all this into account. There are different tuning techniques for each type of pipe. For reed pipes, there is a tuning wire that can be adjusted which adjusts the length of the reed and thus adjusting the tone that will be heard. For flue pipes, tuning is achieved by changing the length of the pipe either through a stopper which is used for closed pipes or a tuning sleeve for open pipes. That's boring. Man! <sighs> One very important step in organ construction is the voicing boring. of the- Boring! <clears throat> the organ builder will- <sighs> The organ builder will make large or small adjustments to tune The organ builder will make large or small adjustments in order to make the organ sound at its best. Some of this is done in the shop, but the final adjustments are made after the organ has been installed in order to tune it to the acoustics of the room. All of this is done to achieve a uniformity of loudness and timbre in each rank of pipes. Now that you've heard all this talk about organs, you might be wondering, what does an organ sound like? In this next segment, you can sit back and relax while you hear the melodious sounds. Of